Hello everybody, it's Linda and I have got another project to share with you. My design team project for this week for Wild Orchid Crafts is a process video on how I created this canvas. Um, last week I said I was going to do a, a tutorial slash process video and uh, I actually had enough time to finish it because I sprained my ankle. So... <laughs> <laughs> I've been sitting with my foot up and uh, with not much else to do than crafting. And the crafting bit is perfect. The foot bit is not so perfect <laughs> because I should have been doing a lot of other stuff. But who can complain? It's going to uh, get well soon anyway. So I hope. <laughs> uh, so sorry about that rambling. Back to my canvas. Uh, I am just like hooked on fairy canvases <laughs> these days and uh, I've been using the Fairy Bell collection uh, by Prima for my cutouts here. These are cutouts from the 6x6 and this is from the 12x12 and uh, I have used some birds from my stash. Just let me pick this up and show you there is another bird down there. And in my process video, you can see how I put everything together and how I made this bird house here. And uh, the thing is that, of course, I'm using the stuff that I have in my stash. But uh, as most of you know, who has watched my tutorials or process videos earlier, I strongly encourage that you use what you have so that you don't have to run out and buy a lot of stuff just to do one project so use um, similar products you don't you don't need the same glue as me though i would strongly uh, advise you to use a glue gun because uh, that's just excellent to, to adhere all of these different flowers and stuff uh, but apart from a glue gun you know you can just go ahead and use whatever you have in your stash and uh, the wild orchid craft flowers that i used are the tea roses and as you can see i have added some snow text to them i've used some large wild rose buds i have used these uh, sprays they are gardenia sprays and i'm I don't think they're uh, in stock at the moment. And these are uh, the Cosmo Daisies. And uh, um, as usual, I'm putting the item numbers on screen for you to see. And I'm linking to the products in the description box below. And this is a large Tuscany rose. And uh, this is a trellis rose. And it's a small one. And um, again, a couple of uh, tea roses, another trellis rose, cottage rose, and you can recognize the, the trellis roses. And he, here is an open rose. And uh, as you can see, that's the type of flowers that I have used. And you'll find them repeating on my canvas. And I use some small leaves from my stash and i've used some beautiful lace from trezor's deluxe and these little blingy thingies these are nails look at my nails they should have been decorated they're horrible sorry <laughs> and uh, yeah some blingy thingies these are like nail decoration things that i got from an ebay seller i think and um they, no, it's not an EB seller, but it's a Chinese seller. Can't remember the name. And this beautiful lace here is from Wild Good Crafts too. And these are gray flatback pearls. And here again is the same lace from Wild Good Crafts. And those little blingy things, they are also all the way around here. And I use a lace from Tresor's Deluxe here as well. And this lace is, sorry if I'm making you dizzy. It's this lace, but to get it around, I just cut off these and I'm going to use those in another project. And I just use the 
the, the edge of the trim down where there is no room for all of those like banner like things and as you can see there's a stencil in the background here and that's a prima stencil and i've got it here here and here and also oh sorry now can, you cannot see where i'm pointing even it's behind here behind here behind here and over there so uh, and this is just uh, down in the corner you've got a fabric rose here that i made and some feathers so this canvas is not completely done yet but i don't have the dye to finish it off i'm waiting for the tim holtz weather clock dye uh, because i had run out of the the die cuts that i'd purchased because you can purchase die cuts on ebay or etsy from those dies if you don't want the the die and i'm going to have this weathered clock sticking out here and also somewhere down here i think so that will more balance my my canvas um okay so these are also cut out from the fairy bell collection these and they're resembling clouds and also down here so yeah if uh, if you're interested in how i did this then uh, please just follow my uh, or watch my process video and uh, i hope you like my canvas i had a lot of fun creating it and i'm currently working on another canvas and uh, that's a canvas with a tree a fairy tree and a fairy door into that tree and i'm also doing a tutorial on that and the fairy door is made sort of the same way that i did the cover of my fairy bell mini album i made the cover of my fairy bell mini album a while back uh, as a fairy door and some of you asked if i could do a tutorial and finally now <laughs> i have done that and uh, that will be published if everything goes according to plan next wednesday so stay tuned for another process tutorial video and uh, have a wonderful day everybody and thank you so much for all the sweet and kind comments that you're leaving me i truly truly appreciate it you you can't believe or you cannot imagine how much it means to me so thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and take care and happy crafting bye bye everyone So first I am using a toilet paper roll for the base of my birdhouse and I'm just cutting it open and I'm going to cover it in pattern paper. I'm using pattern paper from Tim Coffee and it's from the Speciality Paper Pack and I just pick out the, the pattern that suits me. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm just tracing my toilet paper roll and cutting it. So as you can see, I'm adhering the paper to the base using Scotch quick dry adhesive. Use any glue that you have. Mod Podge will work fine. And uh, just use the brayer to push out all the excess air between the toilet paper roll and the paper. And now I'm just um, cutting the base for the roof of my birdhouse. And as you can see, I'm just recycling an old pizza box. And I'm just cutting it to size. And it's a bit of a back and forth kind of thing to, to make it fit. So I'm just brushing the end of my paintbrush onto the cardboard just to make it round more easily. And as you can see, I'm just scoring the edges of the base of my birdhouse to fold it and to make the dimensional shape that I want. And here I'm just pulling some stencils to use and I'm using Crafters Workshop, that's this one. And the other one that you see in the upper corner 
is just a uh, Prima stencil. And I'm using very lightweight modeling paste. If you don't have modeling paste, then you can just uh, use uh, like gesso or a heavy weight modeling paste is fine too, as long as it's a bit flexible. And here's the canvas that I'm using. As you can see, it's got a burlap color to begin with. I'm just brushing on some white gesso. And I will dry brush it on. I'm not using water for this. And I'm using a soft makeup brush that I got. It's really cheap. And uh, I'm just brushing on this. Just like Now I'm just tracing the body of the birdhouse using my pencil and uh, that's just <clears throat> sorry so that I know the approximate placement of it because I'm going to um, put on some um, not modeling paste but I'm actually using a heavy gel medium from Golden for this and the reason why I'm using that is that if I get some color on that I just want to remove it's uh, much easier because it won't stick like uh, that permanently or it will stick permanently but it, it just behaves in a different manner if you want to wipe it off uh, when it's uh, gel medium it's much easier to wipe down the color that you use and that's why I'm using gel medium for this you can use uh, modeling paste that's no problem if, uh, if you don't worry how the colors will look I was a bit worried about that because I wanted to use uh, some colors that I haven't used before. Now I'm using some cardboard to make the roof tile pieces and I'm just tracing the size of the roof and I'm cutting. And before I divide it into pieces I will cover it in pattern paper. And the paper that I use is from a My Mind's Eye paper pad. Now I'm tracing the pattern of my roof tiles or um, roof pieces on the back of the card stock and I'm just cutting them um, a little shorter here and there because I want my roof to be uneven. Using my scalpel to cut, it's easier than the scissors. Now I'm just starting to add color to the background and I'm using Lindy's stamping sprays and I will be using dilution sprays as well. And just make sure that you start with light colors so that you don't, you know, 
just put on something that will just destroy your canvas. So I'm putting on some greens and some blues and some yellows and I'm letting it run and uh, you'll see me just layering and layering and layering color. And as you can see after uh, making the canvas wet with those lighter colors I am adding a stronger color and it's still in these at the moment and uh, you can see I just removed some from those uh, parts with the doily pattern using a wet cloth And now I'm going to glue the birdhouse down and then it's more important to get things straight and that's why I'm using the Tim Holtz ruler. And um, I trace it and then I glue it down. I need to, to glue the top roof first. So I just put some hot glue to the uh, scored edge on the back and I try to push it, position it straight which I don't manage on my first try so I had to pull it up and put it down again now I'm adhering the pieces to the roof and I'm just edging them with black soot and gathered twigs, distressings. 
And as you can see, I'm using my glue gun to adhere it. Now I'm adding the little bit where the bird is going to sit and I have added some hot glue to the edge of that rolled uh, cardboard uh, or cardstock and uh, I just painted white and I just used my distress ink on it. Now I'm painting the edge of my pizza box roof under there because that was showing so I'm just uh, desolating it. I'm just eyeballing to make the bottom of the birdhouse and uh, I use uh, a plate to trace the half circle to get that even and then I'm just filling out the gaps in the cardboard uh, using my glue gun and then I'm adhering it to paper. The gaps that I'm talking about are the gaps at the front edge. Now I've started decorating my canvas and I'm using the Wilder Good Crafts flowers for this. And you will see me glue down some flowers just directly because I just know they're going there. But some I will just move around a bit and uh, find the right placement for and the, the right color combinations and everything. And here I am cutting off the centerpiece of a flower that I have made previously just to add a new Wild Good Crafts tea rose to the center of the flower. And you will not be able to see everything that I'm doing because I just can't work uh, on screen all the time. But you will get an idea of what's going on and that's what I think is important. Now I'm making the stand or base sort of. Uh, I don't know exactly what to call it, but you'll see what I'm making this <laughs> for the birdhouse. And I'm using cardboard. 
just a, a regular cardboard box piece and I'm folding it uh, so that you can see the stripes, the lines uh, are following the corrugation of the cardboard. I'm just uh, rubbing on this gesso and I will just be inking it using some black soot and some gathered twigs distress inks. And I'm keeping it like that, distressed. And I'm just tracing the lid of my Claudine Helmut Gesso uh, to make the bottom base of the bird house stand. And I'm just eyeballing and cutting and uh, gluing it to place. And here you see me adhering some of the gorgeous uh, Tresors Deluxe Lace uh, all the way around the edge. And I cut off some pieces so that they will not stand in the way or will totally be hidden by the lace. No, the flowers, sorry. I decided that those doilies were too green and uh, I wanted to tone them down using some Inca Gold Old Silver Rub-On and that's what I'm doing now. I'm just rubbing it all over those doily patterns to mute the colors. You'll see me try different flowers and colors, but um, they're not all there to stay. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sticking with those uh, mint greens and dark greens and whites, and just adding a little hint of peach with those sprays that you see on the right side, the gardenia sprays. And uh, also, I need to try different sizes flowers just to find them, the ones that I think fit my canvas.
So this is all I have for you and I really hope you enjoyed watching this process video and that you are inspired to make your own altered canvas. So thank you so much for watching everyone and have a wonderful, wonderful day and take care and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.